Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Borg, and this is going to be a quick reaction to the Philadelphia Flyers versus New Jersey Devils. It was not pretty whatsoever. Uh, the Flyers did not play. Um, I saw Bill Metzler tweet something with like eight or ten minutes remaining that this game basically has been kind of a disaster, where it kind of was when the Flyers were down at that point, three to one. This game was not a good 60. As they said on the post game. we were having seen a good 60. Most of the season, other than a select, maybe you could count on one hand, handful of games for our Flyers. But at this point of the season, I see where people are coming from. I understand your frustrations on Twitter. I get overly frustrated at times, too. I've complained on this account about different things as well. But when we actually pull out a win, at this point, I've kind of reserved my mindset to be where it's been for the Phillies for all these years, being Flyers and Phillies as uh, baseball and hockey is my two main sports that I love. Because I just know for them... I come in now expecting them to finish around third and maybe contend where I kind of brought my mindset for the Flyers to now that we're out of it, I'm just going to enjoy the young guys, how Cates does, how Allison does, how the veterans like Giroux kind of bring these guys into the fold here um, and all that kind of who blah, blah, because I know we're not in the playoffs and kind of enjoy the spoiler level. Yes, you're kind of destroying your draft pick um, set here if you keep winning all these games like some people have brought up, but... If you keep winning all these games, you're still more fun for the fans. You're playing spoilers. And also, the key point is, if you're picking at 17th or 20th, or if you're picking at 12th or 15th, if your scouting's doing their job, which I truly think they've done a good job. Look, we found, now he's unfortunately out with surgery, but we found Lezinski in the seventh round. Um, you found, obviously, Ivan Fedotov, who's one of the best KHL goaltenders who you should bring over soon um, in later rounds there as well. So, I mean, there's guys that this team has found um, that they can bring in and do. You found Linus Sandin from overseas that I know, listening to Bob Rotruck when I listened to all the Phantoms games, um, he truly also believes, and I do from covering the fans for Flyers Nitty Gritty, please follow them as well, that he's just one of those simple, keep it easy, stupid players that does everything right, kind of like Raffle when they brought him over from overseas, can kind of maybe take that role uh, going into the future. You have Jackson Cage, you brought him with his brother Noah Cage, who both did great in college and uh, knew how to get it done there, so... I am Minnesota Duluth, where Noah's going back for his final year, but Jackson uh, decided to come to the Flyers, um, which is very good for the Philadelphia Flyers. So I think it's all about just having the right mindset that you're just enjoying the young guys and kind of just playing for next year and seeing who we should keep and who maybe it's right to move on, which is a video I'm going to try to do with stealing some other people after the season, who we know from watching the end of the season, who kind of stepped up in the final month, even through the turmoils of sucking as a whole as a team and not getting everything done, but who still looked good through it all and kind of shined through this asinine, um, screwed up of a season. That's kind of what we're looking for. But when it comes to this game, uh, Michael McLeod, the Flyers at the beginning did a pretty bad job at uh, protecting the front of the net as McLeod was wide open in front of the net. The Miles Wood goal, um, they allow, like Jamie Baskow tweeted, too many opposing rushes each game. Uh, yes, Bastion made a great play on both of these plays, that one as he's falling to make the play, but you still can't keep allowing uh, opposing rushes. And then you, of course, had the Pavel uh, Zaka goal when he won time to when he was wide open in the slot when somehow they could not uh, get the puck off of Jesper Bratt there. So it was not a good defensive game for the Flyers. Again, the only reason they were really in this game, uh, 36 to 32 shots for the Flyers, that's a little deceiving, is because of Brian Moose Elliott playing a good game again. When the team plays in front of him, he plays well. He definitely proves he's a very good backup and someone that anybody should desire if he doesn't stay here past this year uh, to still play with Carter Hart or if the Flyers do decide to bring a aforementioned for Dotov or something. But I wouldn't necessarily have two young goalies as your two goalies. You might want to have a veteran with a young guy, but that's just the way that I see it. But we'll see what they do. But Elliott plays well when um, he actually is going on hot streaks, which he seems like he's kind of playing pretty good himself now, but also when the guys, at least other than those breakdown plays I mentioned, play half worth their damn around him, which is almost really impressive for just how bad the Flyers' defense has been this year, but you broke down with McLeod, you broke down on a rush with Wood, and you left Zach over in the slab, and you should have got it off a of brat, but at least other than that, if you look at the second period, um, when the Flyers actually started playing a little bit more progressive there and looking a little bit better in that second period 
Um... Or, excuse me, in the first period, they played very well. In the second period, they played doo-doo. And then in the third period, they played really good. Um, I was thinking about the um, a couple games ago. I had stuff on my mind. I was thinking about the Phantoms, actually. But um, they played really well in the first period. Uh, played good in the good um, in the really tail end. Better to make the shots 11-9 to by the end, but not too good in the second period. And then they played all right in the third period, but then were able to have Claude Giroux, the guy who was third all-time in points, made a video about that, go to release it after this one, step up and bring the team over the edge. Congratulations to him. It, uh, Charlie O'Connor in his great article for Report Calls on The Athletic, check that out. Put him in the B tier just because if it's fair or not, he said, yeah, he hasn't brought the rest of the team with him, but by the numbers, he definitely deserves to be in the A tier. So I usually agree with him when it comes to reading things, and I completely agree that he deserves to be in the A tier by the numbers, but maybe is in the B tier. He didn't do pluses or anything, minuses like that. Just because of that, but thank God for him yesterday. Scored in the shootout, came up big. Katori came up big with a deflection goal and in the shootout as well. Oh, thank God for Claude Giroux yesterday, and also Kevin Hayes, who's having a really struggle bunny year, was able to come up big in that shootout as well, so good for him, maybe that can get him going to close out the season well, because he hasn't been very good this year. But I hope everyone's enjoyed this quick reaction to a Claude Giroux, Brian Moose, Elliott, the team played, other than those breakdown three plays that led to their goals, adequate enough, worth half a damn enough for him to play good. If they can play at least that, he's proven he's a good goalie. If you can play somewhat around him, no goalie's going to just play great if you leave guys like Chris Kreider wide open, let Buznevich like they did in the Rangers game, skate wide open in front of the net. That's not going to work for anybody. But they played after allowing those absolute crap storm goals, um, showed some chances in the third. They still missed too many nets. Otherwise, the Flyers would have had more shots in this game. They got to stop doing that. But then Claude Giroux came up big. James Van Riemsdyk on both of those goals getting the assist. Along with Voracek came up big. Set up with Giroux. So it's kind of the old school guys we expected to be great all season. Did become great in this game. So this has been a reaction to the Flyers actually winning in a shootout 4-3 to three over those evil devils. I will have a look ahead to the rest of the week over those evil devils coming out soon. And also a video on Giroux surpassing this man, the Griffin Brian Prop, for third all time. Everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Enjoy the rest of the week. And remember, yes, we could look at everything negative but for this season we're already out of the playoffs i've been in this mindset for about two weeks now i'm just enjoying the young guys and playing for next year at this point and trying to play spoilers and ruin other people's playoff hopes that can't really happen in case the devils but i understand the draft pick thing but if you scout well enough and you're picking three picks before or three picks after you should still be able to get a pretty damn good guy look at tyson forster who we got at the bottom half of the first round he's killing the ahl right now and looks like a stud so that's just the way i put it there but everyone have a great safe and pleasant day enjoy the hockey and enjoy this week and stay safe out there peace out everybody